Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the small video, and I thank you for volunteering for the church and cleaning and everything else at this time. I'd just like to go over certain guidelines and procedures on how to do this, so it will be easier for us to accomplish once we get here. Unfortunately, we couldn't be here in person, so I hope this video is informative to you. Any doubts you have, please feel free to email us and we'll clear it for you. Certain uh, things that you need to know before we proceed on our walkthrough. Uh, of course, you will be assigned with PPE. If you have your own protective gear, that's great. If not, we will be providing you uh, the protective equipment as volunteers. This is not available to everybody who comes here, but as volunteers, we definitely want to help you all and uh, we'll be providing all the necessary materials for you. Um, there have to be certain type of questions that will be asked uh, by, by you to the parishioners before admitting them. We will go over those procedures one by one later. Um, hopefully the mass timings are limited to about 40 to 45 minutes, which gives us enough time to let the people leave the church before giving us another half an hour to disinfect the church before the next mass people arrive. So each shift or each mass will involve about six volunteers out of which one will be the lead volunteer who would help coordinate this entire effort. So out of this, the, basically the volunteers will be divided into certain positions like two of them will be here in the church at the entry points, standing and as letting the people in one by one. As the people come in, you will have to ask them the question, do you have any fever, cough or cold? You ask them this simple question and then offer them hand sanitizers if they want, great. If they are bringing their own, that's better. And then you let them in. Two volunteers only at two entrances. One other volunteer will stand here or up there and they will be counting the people as they come in. No more than 90 people at one time will be let into the church because we have to also remember it is 100 people total. That includes the priests and the volunteers themselves. So you let in only 90 people. Once that count is reached, we have to tell them we are sorry and close the doors. So that is something we have to keep in mind. Once that is done, two other volunteers will then lead the people as ushers to the spots. I will show you where we have marked the pews and we go there, you lead the people and you tell them where to sit. It is clearly marked. I've tried to make it as foolproof as possible so it should be easy for everybody to understand so you won't be troubled. Once that is done and everybody is seated and the mass begins, then the next main part comes during um, communion. During communion, what you do is you lead people row by row. Pew by pew, people will be led. Others will remain seated. Instructions will be given to all the people before every Mass. So they should know what to expect and it will make your lives easier. So we will basically be leading them pew by pew to the priests. And once it's done, we make sure they go back maintaining the safe social distancing. Similarly, at the end of Mass, the people are also told to leave the church pew by pew. So that allows them time to go and not bump into each other. The exits are at the back of the church. So that makes it much easier for this whole thing as the flow of traffic is more structured. Let's go out and I will show you exactly how the entrances and exits are marked. So it makes it easier for you. As you notice, this is the front entrance from the parking lot and we have a line that is supposed to be formed here 
So this is the designated entry. People will be lining up here. We have uh, social distancing markers. Some more will be put up later, but basically we have some markers that will indicate where people should be stationed. The doorway will act as the guard where there is a table and the hand sanitizer will be placed and people will be offered that and you can talk to them about it. A similar type of setup, excuse me, plane, sorry. side also it's exactly the same it's just because that is the street so they will be marked on the curb and people will line in one after the other shouldn't take more than 15 seconds per person asking them you know do you have fever cough or cold and then if they say no let them in if they say yes uh, tell them sorry uh, but you cannot you know let them in so that is the thing and then you lead them in you pass them to the next usher who is waiting for you. The usher will lead them in to the rows over here. As you can see, the rows that people are not supposed to be are clearly blocked off with tape. And where they can, they will. you can lead them in. The spots where they have to stand are clearly marked with crosses, little brook crosses that marks exactly. This whole arrangement has been done in the entire church. People can be seated everywhere uh, in the entire facility. The exact number of spots necessary are marked. So if the spots are filled, it means there is no more room. But we should, the counter should be informing you that well ahead of time. Also, families are allowed to sit together. So keep that in mind when you are assuring to them to their spots that families can sit give some distance for the other person and everything else is okay. As you notice, all the shrines are blocked off. They are also, people are advised not to touch them as it will limit and uh, it will cause us problem, especially for disinfecting. It's going for here. During communion, you will note that we have marked on the floor the same social distancing sickers. Two priests will be there. Father, one father will be in the front of the church and the other in the center of the church. The priests, once, once you lead the people towards them, they take communion, step to the side, uh, receive their, put, put the communion in their mouth, and then they go over and return back to their pew. After everything is over, they exit back out this way to go to the exit over here or these two on the side at the back. Also, the collection baskets will be placed one down the center ahead, one here in the middle of the church and one right here in the back. So three collection baskets. Please keep an eye on them. People will be leaving where the collection baskets are placed. So just keep an eye on them as the as you let the people out so it's easier to understand after all this is done people have left then we ask you to kindly proceed to the cry room or the family room that is located you will also note that we have roped off the ways that they should be using for the exits only they should be proceeding towards that. The bathroom on the other side will be locked. The Guadalupe room will be locked. The only two restrooms that are going to be allowed are the one over here and the one in the front. Similarly, uh, choir lofts are closed. They should not be entering. And once uh, you finish everything, then you enter to the cry room to get your materials. We have placed the necessary materials for cleaning here. The lead volunteer will help and distribute and give it to you. We have gloves for you, masks, tissues, disinfectants and uh, cleaning supplies. So basically everything is there. Please get your masks and your other protective equipment before 
the mass begins before you start your work and the cleaning supplies after mass. We want you safe more than anybody else. So please uh, take care of this. And once this is all done, please uh, notify your shift lead that you have done your duty. And we thank you for your help. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. I thank Manny here for helping me film this short thing that we are trying to establish with this curfew. But uh, thank you so much. And if you have any doubts, feel free to contact us um, via the church email. I'm hoping that I can have you in person on Friday at 4 p.m. But if you do not understand, please let me know anytime. Thank you so much.